So you're thinking about going to school to be a technologist, but what is a technologist? You know, everybody seems to know what a lawyer is, what a doctor is, a police officer, a librarian, but technologist? That's kind of a more nebulous term. It's like relativity. We sort of know what it is, but not really. In this video, we're going to explore what that actually means and how it differs from being a technician or an engineer. So stick around. Let's start with something familiar, a doctor. A doctor is a medical professional who diagnoses a patient, figures out what's wrong and comes up with a treatment plan and starts the patient on that path. But the doctor doesn't usually stay with that patient through the entire treatment process. They hand things over to healthcare professionals, nurses, practical nurses, technologists, technicians, the people who are responsible for the patient's day-to-day -day care. Now, that doesn't mean the doctor disappears. They'll check in, do follow-up assessments, tweak the treatment if necessary, but most of their time is spent diagnosing and planning not hanging out at the bedside. And that's key. I use this analogy a lot when I'm trying to explain what a technologist does, especially in the context of engineering. So let's focus on engineering technologists for a minute. In engineering, it's kind of the same setup. We don't have a patient, obviously, but we've got a project, something that we're designing to be built or implemented. In my case, it's a ship or a yacht, but it could be a bridge, a space telescope, a network, whatever. The engineer does the heavy lifting up front, the high level design work, complex calculations, checking safety and regulation and those kinds of things. This phase can be short, months, or it may take years, particularly if some new technology has to be developed and approved for use. Once the main design is approved, once the treatment plan is written, so to speak, and before construction begins, it gets handed off to technologists and technicians. And in the same way as with doctors, it's not like the engineers disappear. They're looped back in when there are questions or design problems or whatever. And sometimes they're called on to check over different aspects of the design and things like that. And just like in healthcare, where there are way more nurses than doctors, there are generally more technologists and technicians because that's the more practical hands-on work. And there tends to be many more hours of this kind of work, particularly on large construction projects. It's also a more efficient use of time and money. Engineers are expensive. They're highly trained, so it doesn't make a lot of sense to have them spending thousands of hours doing CAD modeling or calculating how a single bracket or beam will be fabricated. That's where technologists come in. They're skilled, they're trained, but their role is focused more on implementation, modeling, drafting, and doing many of the routine or moderate complexity calculations. Things like producing 3D models to work out construction solutions and then extracting 2D fabrication drawings. That's a technologist's territory. And maybe even wandering into technician space a little bit. That said, there's a lot of overlap. An engineer might model something, a technologist might perform a detailed calculation. A technician might step in with fabrication advice. There's no hard line where one job ends and the next begins, but there are legal boundaries. Just like a nurse can't sign a prescription, there are things a technologist can't do, like legally signing off on designs. That responsibility belongs to a licensed engineer or architect. So what about certification? Engineers can become licensed professional engineers. That's PNG or professional engineer in Canada or PE in the US. And usually this is after their education is finished or their undergraduate degree. Uh, and after they gain qualifying experience and pass a bunch of exams. Technologists can also become certified or professional technologists. And in some jurisdictions, there are pathways for technologists to become a PNG. 
and in other places an LNG, or limited license engineer, with a reduced scope of what they can legally sign off on. It's similar in education too. Doctors go to school a lot longer than nurses. They do undergrad, med school, residency, and keep up with ongoing research and new information that's developed in the field. Nurses still study hard, usually a four-year degree, but it's a different depth and, and focus. Same with engineers and technologists. Engineers typically do a four or five year degree from an accredited university. Some go on to do a master's or even a PhD in engineering. Their focus is more on the higher end theoretical things like finite element analysis, and they're using higher math like calculus to solve difficult problems associated with dynamic systems. Technologists usually do a, a three-year diploma, also from an accredited college or a polytechnic. They can certainly go on to do more education as well. They learn to use the basic design tools like CAD, probably better than an engineer, but not nearly as well as a technician. A technologist learns some theory and gains some design skills during their training, so they generally understand enough to do some of the calculations, particularly the less dynamic ones that can be solved with algebra then can take what they've done and generally have enough hands-on skills to turn the solved problem into something that can be built. Technicians? They'll usually complete a two-year program that has a much heavier focus on the tools. So an engineering technician will learn the CAD tools inside and out, whereas a repair technician can probably rebuild a car, a photocopier, or an MRI machine blindfolded. Each role has its place, each role is important, but they're built differently and they're trained differently and expected to do different types of work, albeit with a lot of crossover. In a design office, you typically have a blend of all three, with the ratio between the different people in the design chain, that is engineers, technologists, and technicians, varying depending on the type of work that the office does. In some design offices, you have just a couple of engineers that are checking the work of many technologists and technicians. Those offices tend to lean more towards production type work where there are thousands of parts required to be designed, like in the production design phase of ship construction, for example. Other offices are more engineer centric as the type of work that they're doing requires the higher level of training, such as working out the design for additions to the electricity grid. Being a technologist means being the bridge between high-level engineering and on-the-ground implementation. You're not just following instructions, you're tackling real-world problems, designing solutions and making sure what's designed gets built as designed. You're one of the people in the design chain that takes the customer's vision and figures out how it's actually going to be built, tested, and maintained. And that's no small thing.